Renekton first pick worthy, as we've seen with the win rate. But Rogue Warrior still had the champion that they built off the success of in game one. And now again, the oh, oh well, actually, no, the Olaf hasn't slipped, th slipped through, but you can still see an Imagine EDG putting priority onto that jungle pick. Because yep. once you start to get rid of these, with Junjia's champ pool a little bit pinched, we need to get something solid for him. Now, he still has the Jarvan available, and that was picked up in the first rotation on red side last time. Hope, big MF player, pretty much like every other AD carry. So, a rinse and repeat, yep, same as game one. Could still go for something like that rumble on this EDG roster, though, we were calling for in the last game. No pressure so far on that uh, support pool. Mako, I think, did a pretty good job on the Braum. It was just unfortunate with the way that gank in the bottom lane went. Yep. It was punished pretty heavily. Rumble could also be pitched here by Rogue Warriors. Let's see. Because it's been such a high priority pick, you'd have to give up the bottom lane. But lay on Thresh again. Hey, yeah. in the end, he got a bit more accurate. And now what do you try and go for? I feel like you tr potentially solidify something like the Mordekaiser in the top lane. Give yourself that strong pick up there if you really want to. Or you could tend towards the jungler and just make sure you've got something nice for yourself. Oh, but Ruby on something stable. And I think that's nice in its own right. So we still have a jungler. We still have a uh, top laner, excuse me, to pick up there for crazy. Well, on the side of EDG, to me, it seems like, okay, let's change around, around the support. The Brom didn't work out too well. It was punished hard. The Nautilus can counterplay this Thresh a little bit more. Yeah, we'll keep him honest in this bottom side for at least a little bit of time. It's when this game starts to progress further, though, we'll have to see how Lei starts to yeah. work in those hooks once again. If I'm EDG side here, I'm looking towards those top lane ban. Aatrox, well, never mind. It's going to say Aatrox, Mordekaiser, but Bra with the jungler not locked in either, I think it's the best bet no, to go for I, I think you're onto something known, and if we do see jungle bans, that's fair, but that means that the Aatrox, the... Uh, we don't have Renekton. What else hits up in the top oh, The Mordekaiser is the, the one that The Mordekaiser. Yeah. There you go. Sit on, uh, rely on you for a reason, Dagda. <laughs> Rumble going to make it w its way through to the second ban phase, though, so no cigar for Scout. He still has the Zoe available, but whether Rogue Warriors want to target that this time around or not is going to be the next question. Look, I think if I'm Scout, I'm still comfortable to take that Zoe into the matchup. It was because of that roam he ended up falling behind more so than the matchup itself. But last jungle ban, I'm assuming going to be coming through from EDG. Although a lot of discussion about well, what they want to get rid of. Elise is still there. Yeah, Elise would make the most sense to me. Hey. Oh, getting rid of the okay, so I mean, if I'm Wei Yan, I'm still pretty happy to go with something like the Elise here. Or we could see the old Wei Yan favorite of Karthus potentially sneak through. Hey. Could work here in this scenario. Hey, he hovered over that last time around. You know, Wei Yan, after the confidence from game number one, why not? I mean, you got the Azir on the roster, but LeBlanc going to be the final ban here. So, again, we're set up for that same matchup through the mid lane if they want to go through. Well, that's going to be the Zoe. Look, this makes most sense. We already said it. We're happy with the matchup. It was just a misdirection in the play. Wow. So, we still locked that one in. Now, I think if I'm on the side of Rogue Warriors, I'd love to see Crazy on the a -trop. I was just noticing 32% win rate from Zoe. Sorry to take the option. Yeah, no, Stop you're stopping. fine. It's not it. I mean... But it that sucks. Yeah. It's <laughs> not but this is the problem I have with uh, some of these champions that do get in a locked in a lot of the time is that they don't have the best of win rates, but that doesn't diminish that they're just good picks in general. Yeah. Safe line like the Zoe. The Aatrox you were mentioning before I rudely cut you off is going to be picked up from Crazy. His most played champion alongside the Renekton. And here we go. Gragas. Over to where yet. Yeah. And look, this means that... Ooh. Okay. Okay, forget the Gragas. Yeah. Now you walk me through this because... The only person who constantly picked Fiora in the LPL is no longer playing in the LPL currently, and that's Khan. So Xiao Sheng, the debut competitive split in his career, not just LPL, in his career, is like, I can play Fiora. So as glancing at his stats earlier on today, from his career, Xiao Zhang has played one game of Fiora, but he went monstrous on it. He was 7-1 and one on the Fiora in that game. So now that you've got a counter pick here for the Fiora and the VA trucks, this is where I want to see EDG double down on that stall we're talking about. Yeah, well, you have Getting to. up to the top lane, forcing Fiora to get ahead and win through side lanes. Because the top lane was absolutely abandoned last game. We yeah. didn't see no hide nor hair unless it was in the team fights. Now you have a Fiora up in that lane. Now I'm like, okay, I'm not watching mid anymore. I've got a similar matchup. I'm going top. Aatrox versus the Fiora. My eyes are stuck there. And this was the thing. I was looking at Crazy and going, okay, he's been winning this matchup pretty handily with Renekton. He looks on paper like the better top laner. Well, if you can put him onto the Aatrox, he should be able to have a decent matchup there. And Xiao Shang then goes, well, what the hell do I do? 
I bring out this Fiora, I take that fight with the gauntlet thrown down, and now it's all on this rookie top laner to perform. When Hope and Maker have consistently been the shining light or the, the hope itself of the team alongside Scout. So this is a big shift in gears for EDG. You can see how not only through draft, but through game one, EDG have been pressured here. And it feels like, okay, we need to draft this singular winning lane, or rather our most important lanes, into the top side and that is such a big call for a team that is down and also without their two shining lights in top and jungle and in theory this should work out if you look at the way the early game plays out zoe does well into his ear we already discussed on the last game you already touched on the bottom lane nautilus and misfortune can push in this aphelios and thresh so this will allow junja to focus this top side because it should be the rest of the map having control i want to see what way yen does he's had a good performance so far and has had a pretty good start to the split all things considered let's see how rogue warriors push the tempo again against edg in game number two Jayo! We don't have the things on our screen for some reason. And I miss, I miss that. Yeah. What happened? I'm going to send an email through. I still got to put that on my Twitter. Have you actually recorded your own video, though? I did, but I didn't send it. I was scared. <laughs> Just put it on Twitter. I want to see it. No, no, Look, no, you no, put no, up no. enough embarrassing videos of yourself on Twitter embarrassing. today. Embarrassing. <laughs> I did my makeup and my eyes look so cool. I started using an app, and it's really fun. And I'm just waiting... <laughs> For someone to call me out but so far so good i gave people some sleepless nights apparently it's worse than the fiddlesticks update Thank that you was so a much. very footy tweet okay. that was very good well look either way i main fiddle so me and him go hand in hand i take that as a compliment as you should if you were rogue warriors game one after their performance edg going to be starting on towards that top side with a solo start from junjia but a deep board onto the blue from rogue warriors or rather on rogue warriors blue stuff so this is where they're looking to hide how Junjia starts because look at where Jarvan's pathing. They're looking for the level two gank on Crazy. Already the pressure's coming down on the Aatrox. Well, at least they know their win condition in this game. Definitely hand in hand. But Junjia, the vertical jungle, yeah, gives priority to this Fiora wholeheartedly while the Gragas is going to have to shift gears quickly but award to spot out the blue buff take. And Junjia thought he'd be able to spot out this ward in that top lane brush yep. but they placed it further back so good call coming through from the side of rogue warriors to look at that well, play. they hit level two first but a good flay here on Tomeka, but aftershock absorbs all of it and lay is dangerously low you gotta respect that level two it's been a while since i've seen a pro player caught out by that but lay most certainly taking the brunt of that damage and now you can see Zhao Zhang with the comfort knowing the Jarvan's on the side, trying to go aggressive on this top side. Now, we don't see too much Fiora, but everyone knows you've got to play with the vitals. You've got to position around it. So uh, it's about how crazy matches these trades. So the reason that this is considered a counter matchup is because you can dash around from the Dark and Blade procs. And as well, you get so much of that healing back yourself, hitting yep. off with all those procs. And in the later stages of the game, you can just chase down this Aatrox and kill him underneath his towers. Yeah, very true. At this point, the turret diving, it's not going to start this early on, but Xiao Sheng is in such an aggressive position. Now, keep track of junglers here, because for the Jarvan, his blue buff was not taken. There's actually going to be a triple buff here, because Wei Yen didn't look for the contest. He didn't look for the cross, uh, cross across river that early on. So this is because... He's more focused on these ganks. Back to get this early Predator, which means he can make about a 340, 345 second gank out onto the map. And eyes are going towards the top lane. Problem is, Xiao Sheng's already backed. He knew he was a bit overextended, decides to pick up a second Storm Blade to double down on this advantage that he'll gain in the lane and keep himself safe. And he's walking to this lane as well. The teleport's available, but that's going to be the advantage here. As coming back with Look that double Doran's great trading, yeah. Wei Yen, a very aggressive towards Raptors. But Scout going to go in. He has a smite, gets the trouble bubble over the wall, but Xiao Sheng is here, and it's Fiora. If she gets a kill here, this is going to be dangerous. Wei Yen, in a really difficult position, gets the barrel roll, but now three members on top of him. As Are you going to flash? Are you going to body slam? No, you're going to give first blood to the win condition of EDG. And the EDG game plan has part A underway. Gives that kill over towards the Fiora. So Zhao Zhang will now be in the lead. Doesn't even have to worry about that lane because it's slow pushing into him. Should be able to freeze this here and look to keep himself in good shape. And this is not the jungle start that we saw from Wei Yen last time. With intelligent pathing, reading Junjia, 
this time around, spotted on multiple wards, gets triple buffed against the Javan. And this is where I was looking towards the IG series and going, look, is this way Jan playing fantastically? Well, he's going to tell me right okay, now. Okay, well, he's got the land and he's got the body slam. He forces the flash out of Mako, rather. Hope, excuse me. Dredge line from the Nautilus, but he's spotted out once again, and he's still falling behind in this jungle. Junjia, on to Crazy here. Now, Crazy is just going to walk past oh, no. him. Ships in the night. Crazy's walking to lane, though, and he knows he's going this way. This is Gromp being taken now, but the wave is shoving into the Fiora. Dagda, I'm curious where this goes from here. I will apologize, actually pushing against Crazy right now, but uh, he's in a good position to come up behind Crazy if he stays in the top lane. Well, you can see right now where... Oh, he missed times the repost. Oh, he does. So trade comes back heavily for Crazy. The Fiora has the double Dorans, but also the Executioner's calling here is going to make a big deal. It's going to make it a lot more difficult for Zhao Zhang to heal up. But the thing is, you can see how heavily these trades go in favor of the Fiora. But the key thing is managing that repost. You can easily predict when the Darkened Blades are going to actually hit you with the knockup or even that Infernal Chains. <laughs> oh, for Every I'm game. Sick of this. I'm sick of this. I hate Come Zoe. On. I mean, honestly, redemption shouldn't be given until you're like level 11 or something. Redemption shouldn't be given. No. It just, it's. He, it's had, so a, he had a chilling smite before. Before yeah. any junglers even picked up like a Stalker's Blade. I mean, that's just ridiculous, honestly. I thought he was going to go over the wall and just smite away the big chicken when they did go on to yeah. Weiyan, but wasn't needed. I have to pick up the kill in that scenario, but either way, this is a very frustrating lane for Crazy to be in. Now having the extra help of that redemption only is a bit of a, a kick when you're already down. It was. It gave a tiny bit of health to Xiao Sheng, but in reality as well, I think we have to compliment Crazy on that earlier trade because that did push him into a much more comfortable position, and so is the wave. And Wei Yan's towards his top side and says, no, 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 you're not the jungler, get out. We've been focused on this top side for quite a while, though. Let's take stock of where we are in the rest of the map. Because you can see EDG are trying to push their advantage here in the bottom lane. Hope has got the CS numbers. A good hook onto Mako. Gravitum to come through. There's some great trading, but Aftershock absorbs it as Junji is coming in for the turret dive. The flag and drag available. They get the bullet time, or rather the Q on to lay while the Jarvan goes for the dive. And this is messy from EDG, but they complete it with Hope. So some good diving, but now Ruby's in with the Empress Divide. On to three. The hill to come through, but the flag and drag. The thank you, man, with the flash. Ruby, a little bit too late, and he could not get them all. Ruby, 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 nah, that's not what you want to do. Gives over the kills, does manage to get one back in his favor, but EGG are still in a position here to push in this wave, deny a good amount of gold and experience from Zhang Wuji. That's right, definitely not worth it, because at the end of the day, I believe the kill went over to Scout. Either way, one for the AD carry, one for the mid laner. This is not the start of the game that we saw. In game number one, this is EDG taking back control. And I want to go back to the point I wanted to make about Wei Yan, which was he always had jungle control in those games against the IG. Yep. This is where you're falling behind, and Junji and Co are able to make these plays aggressively because they know the Gragas isn't there. Jarvan has control of this matchup. He's capable of making these dives. And now we're starting to see Wei Yan exposed a little bit when they fall behind. Ruby, though... Doesn't even manage to pick up the You, you kill can imagine, if Ruby was a little bit closer towards that wall that goes into the turret, he could have shoved them in underneath turret with no wave. Maybe that play works out, but not going to be the case. Xiao Shang, meanwhile, on the top lane, this is a very serious trade, and Crazy can't get much back. This, this top lane matchup is not going to get any better for Crazy. No. You've got the team out there, so just that extra proc of the trade, able to shove in the wave consistently now and look towards getting some of those turret plates as well and because you've got full control of the top side you're able to go for these plays off of the pressure hope and make have created for themselves in the bottom lane now i want to come back to what we saw in that bottom lane trade because it's led to one thing to another right edg now on the dragon that was because of how successful they are in bottom and mid through the kill onto scout through the kill onto hope infernal boosts the stats and we got an ocean coming up next and what's way Yan doing He's stealing away a Raptor camp. This guy has had no impact in this game. And look, this is a big issue. If this is the way that Rogue Warriors needs to operate, having jungle control, well then I'd rather see them give over the Aphelios and get Wei Yan onto the Jarvan, something he has control of this matchup. Still 10 CS behind at this point. Junjia giving over the blue buff to Scout. Uh, Scout really crucial in that bottom lane dive before with great allocation and trouble bubble, but Rogue Warriors 
dive themselves, but Xiaosheng has ultimate available. There's a body slam, but ultimate is burnt. And guess what? It's countered. The, the grand challenge comes the down. Healing. He's got the healing, and he gets two. He's still alive. Now for Crazy, the namesake will recover part of it, but you don't dive a Fiora because she smacks right back. Xiaosheng, the rookie top laner for EDG, smacks down the any play Rogue Warriors want to go for. And with that, Junja is able to pick up the Rift Herald for free. It's a disaster. The repost, the parry, excuse me, onto the Grag Assault. And everything turns upside down. 3 1 and 0. The pickaxe with the tier mat. And the rest of EDG were just doing their own stuff on the map while Rift Herald's getting taken as well. We said the single game, Zhao Zhang has played on Fiora. He was 7 and 1. Right now, he is 3 and one yeah. working up towards that ravenous hydra you've only got the executioners on the side of crazy that really means anything for this aatrox so fiora dead set on taking over this game and all edg have to do in the rest of the map is pop their feet up clear yep. those waves and this game is in the bag two and a half thousand gold towards edg rogue war is falling behind even faster there's a rift herald on the java now too so junjia can push out that lane while turret plating is still available get more gold onto the solo laner, or look elsewhere and elevate the rest of EDG. I want to see where this Rift Herald is going to be used. Because there is an argument to use it up in the top side, get more gold into Zhao Xiang's back pocket. But th I'd also like to see them now invest in the rest of the map. You know this Fiora is going to be ahead regardless, so let's see if we can get some of this gold shared and be a bit more generous with our allocation. Well, Xiao Xiang at the moment, where? Is he stuck in that lane? Of course. I don't want to look at him. I want to look at Junjia. That's the one. He's actually moved to the mid lane as Hope and Mako do the same. Almost get Ruby as well. But Rift Child going to be dropped here. Four members of EDG setting out the push while Jung Wuji isn't joining. And look at the difference in this lane. When you've got Scout who's able to stay in this the whole time. Has been slowly chipping away at these turrets. Now has the Rift Herald finish it off in this the top lane. This happens again. Grand challenge into the world end of Xiaosheng. One more vital to be hit. And Crazy is going to get hit. Now the turret dive continues as the full healing comes through. Crazy is out once more. The Fiora has pushed. And he's insane to think he can take this fight anymore. Xiaosheng wins every scrap. And you are not going to get a scrap of CS anymore if you continue to play like this. Potential terror dive set up in the top side if Mako wants to roam. Well, crazy. You just saw him burn his ultimate, so he has to back away. Turret plating at the ready here for Xiao Shang. And this next back, that's going to be Titanic. Or Ravenous. No, Ravenous, excuse Look, me. He can buy half the damn shop at this stage. This Fiora is yeah. so fed. True. How do you start to look at this as Rogue Warriors? You've now got someone who has to deal with this Fiora on the side push. You have to deal with Scout, who's got a bunch of gold thanks to that turret push. You've got Misfortune as well for Hope, who's working wonders. And we haven't even touched on the combo that EDG have with the bullet time and the Cataclysm yet. Yeah. Really easy to execute, and a combination that EDG in the past, through their core members, have been able to execute. And that's all that's important. A Ravenous Hydra, the first pick up here. Not the first of the game, but the first pick up in that top lane at least. And this is where it continues. Dragon, in just a few moments, they'll be able to start this acceleration play going even further. Dagda, I've noticed something. Now, Tell me. Xiao Shang, in his uh, brief level advantage, he also has teleport available, and Crazy at the moment does not. 30 seconds of that dragon you were just mentioning. With the gold lead, the ability to fight with Luden's Echo picked up, Essence Reaver here. Both for Hope and Scout. They're ready. So there's two ways you can play this teleport advantage. You can actually have Zhao Zhang push in this wave and just walk down, then teleport back up if Crazy tries to answer, mm. get the top lane turret. Or they can try and bait Rogue Warriors into utilizing all their CC early on, which means by the time Xiao Zhang teleports in, he can heavily win out in these fights and have free reign as Fiora in the scrap. Because either way you look at it, both options kind of seem bad <laughs> for Rogue, Rogue Warriors. Warriors. Yeah. Yeah. It's not great. <laughs> well, Wei Yen is towards this top side, so to me it seems like they're going to abandon Dragon for the ability to try and put Fiora behind, but Xiao Shang pays respect. It's bot lane that they got to be careful of, though, because if you're a 
putting all this pressure topside. Well, Aphelios can't hold on to this tower. Mm. Lei has started to roam up. So they get the dragon, they get the bottom lane turret, and Xiao Shang's got his thinking cap on because he's backed off. Yeah, all the way off towards red buff. Pings are going down. EDG are, are not going to play this mistake. And instead, you just get the Krugs and you wait for the wave to come in. I actually think if it's only two, he could probably 1v2. But I don't think it's going to be two. Ruby's on the way. Lei is now the man holding down mid lane. Never thought a support would be able to go that far. But Mako is here to back things up. Well, walks on in. The control ward going to be crucial here. Ability to clear it out. But they're really looking for opportunities through this top lane. And still, pathing towards the top side. Now going mid. <laughs> well, let's just 1v1. With the bullet time almost coming through, Hope's going to get played in and looks for the 1v2, the flash away from the death sentence. He now turns his damage and attention, Wuji, one He's more hit. Him. He gets it to ignite and gets two, but that's going to be golden until Lei. Get ready. It's G'day from Hope in the bottom lane. They've always got hope, hysterics, and they have crushed any hope that Rogue Warriors had of picking up a win in game number two. Fiora's fed, Hope is 1v2 in, and the rest of EDG it have the map. Doesn't matter. Shaosheng starts with the 1v3 under turret, and now the 1v2 bot, oh, and now no. the solo kill of the top lane. Jarvan flashes in, Cataclysm's down, Crazy's gonna get a bit of healing, and even though Junjiao will, no, not die there. Shaosheng's a bro, even gets the healing to survive. EDG are playing so much better. Wei Yan has the cast though. Yeah, and he flashes on in. He gets one. The explosive cast brings back the Jarvan. Good capitalization here from Wei Yan. Big shutdown onto the Fiora too. They needed something. Delighted Wei Yan could have some play in this game to turn it anything back in the favor of Rogue Warriors. EDG though are still in control of this game unless Rogue Warriors could turn on towards this Rift Herald as it spawns. Looks like that's the play. Yeah, massive, massive hit from the Gragas though just to come back. Now, if they take Rift Herald here, get some gold in Ruby's pockets. He's got the Nashes. That could evolve to something else. We've also got the first item wanting here for Jung Wuji, but even though EDG aren't in the area, it's going to take more than that. There's still a 5k gold lead from EDG at 16 minutes. But at least Rogue Warriors, they're, they're not out of this yet. Well, let's take stock of where we're at because it's all been a bit hectic and we actually haven't looked at where people are. We've got Essence Reaver and a BF Sword picked up for Hope after that fantastic play in the bottom lane. Yep. Luden's Echo coming in from the Zoe. And on the top side, that Black Cleaver is very much underway for Xiao Shang. So crucial items are starting to come together and EDG are going to hit like a truck off these two items. Actually, I take that back. It's probably not the Black Cleaver. It's more than likely the Trifle. Yeah, I was, I was just for. thinking, I'm like, well, this position, Trinity Force Look, just I've been, so much better. I've been watching Watching Aatroxes and sets and all these for too long. I've seen too many black people. Well, as well, doesn't, goes doesn't LS well. advocate for Trinity Force Aatrox? I believe he does. He does. He and does. Look, and I've tried it on ARAM yeah. and it feels good. <laughs> <laughs> but do I have the guts to do that in Summoner's Rift? Absolutely not. So you think that that's what we should see coming out from Crazy here? Is that what we're advocating? Yeah, yeah, no, he just picked up Black Cleaver. We're not talking about that, but I do like the Trinity Force on the, on the Fiora here to, to further your point. But also, remember, at this point, when he does pick up that Trinity Force, he will be pretty much an item ahead of Crazy. He's already a level ahead. He's starting to build up CS. And to Crazy's credit, he's kept up in this really harsh lane. But I wonder how much longer that goes on as Depth, oh, the hook. depth Charge is available, doesn't use it as Golden from way in. He blocks, still has that ultimate available. Mako uses it, and here comes the bullet time. As Scout comes in with the burst, Crazy now goes, oh no, that's my lane opponent. Get out of there. And the fight is done. I blinked and I missed it. Everyone disintegrated in front oh, of our eyes. Ruby's now the turret's dead. gone. The Fiora just snuck behind and killed the Azir with one flick of the wrist. That is insane. EDG are snowballing this game so hard that they're coming back and saying, Rogue Warriors, last game was a fluke. We're here to play ball. This is what I expected EDG to be in this form. And whether it took a game or whether Rogue Warriors have just been shut out so hard this game. I mean, there's so much to dissect from this series already. But at 18 minutes, one thing I know for sure is that when we get into this mid-game, we're not going to slow down. The fighting's going to continue. I expect an all-out brawl in the next five minutes. And we potentially get another one of these. This is only game number two. This is a best of so. three series. And with a minute left before this Baron spawns, EDG will be looking to put Fiora on the bottom side, put pressure onto that inhibitor turret in the bottom lane, 
to secure the big objective. We've got a mountain coming up in 15 seconds as well, but look at this. Xiaosheng used his abilities, sorry, summoners, in the last kill onto Ruby. And even though Wei Yen is here, does he want to go back in? He's going to get cornered in a second. Lay with the death sentence that lands. Over the, the ultimate. But the repost, you're right. The grand challenge onto Ruby. Xiaoshan could turn this, but the explosive cast says, yeah, you go. We don't want to kill you anyway. Pops them away. There's no drinking today. Paddy's day is cancelled for every... Oh, no, well, it's actually, not. Maybe no, it's not. not. No, We're it's coming not. back. <laughs> Rift Herald's going to come through. They want to get the turret. The death sentence weird from Lay. He's tanking. Almost dies to it. Now that Rift Herald's here, though, they have a minion. Mid lane, but though. Into the back. The Repost's still there. They kill him. And you're right. Meanwhile, EDG say, that's fine. We hit mid. We'll get the back through, though. They haven't fully committed for any of these towers. So might get back before that wave crashes. Rogue Warriors have made the play, but it's a tier one for a tier two. Yeah. And Scout might even get... Okay. Yeah. He's going to get this no matter what. Yeah, yeah. So, backs away. Yeah. Portal jump not capitalized. The Rift Herald gets another charge up in that top lane. And again, small props where it's due here to Rogue Warriors who have been really punishing this Fiora lane. Watch but what happens in this spot now. Okay. Because you've got tier two in the bottom lane down. That opens up that inhib turret now for this Fiora. Yep. So even though she's been punished by multiple people, you see it's taken three to four people to take her down. Shang has free roam on this bottom side, will only have Crazy to try and take care of her, him because they need to fight at this bar. But I do like the decision making here from the top lane Fiora. Instead goes to the top side once again because doesn't have that teleport available. Baron's up. And the Mountain Dragon, as you saw before, was taken by EDG in that trade. So. I don't even know if it matters now. I think I think Xiao Shang so far ahead that if they go for the Baron, concede it, you just take the Inhibs. Okay. You can just work with it. And even then, what do EDG get off of that play? All they have is one outer turret down. Well, cool. We'll sacrifice an outer turret for your Inhib. Yeah. Good point. Everything looking up. Vision control here from RW, at least around that Baron pit. And EDG are walking in. It's time to clear. While well, the Fiora gets a shove in the top lane and is still hanging around, lurking and waiting for EDG to find something in this enemy jungle. We're trying to see if they can catch on to Ruby. We'll safely make it back. But this is where you got to be careful. It's only Azir who's hovering around here. Lay might get spotted. The scout's in the bottom lane, but he has teleport. Run away, they say. Hope uses the heal to give the movement speed bonus. Crazy. Uses the World Ender as well, but Wei Yen in a crucial position. The explosive cast sends back the Jarvan, but that's the second time around. That his ultimate has done nothing. They were trying to get the pick before Xiao Shang could set up on either of these side lanes. Not going to come out. Now you've lost the cask for potentially a Baron fight. You're also keep your eyes towards the 2 minute and 40 mark where we will have that Mountain Dragon spawning. And we also have a Trinity Force available now for Xiao Shang. So there's the two items that we're speaking about for a while. Crazy still in the Caulfield's Warhammer. So nowhere near the Death Stance that could compete and outplay this Fiora. So we got to look at when exactly do Rogue Warriors come into their own in this game. Because when we look at the compositions, yes, we've got Fiora, we'll always win out on this side lane. But the rest of Rogue Warriors will eventually scale. So if we're holding off on these scenarios till, you know, 35 minutes or so, Ruby and Zhang Wuji will be able to win the 4v4. But how far away is that when Xiao Xiang is chasing crazy down at Grand the moment? Grand challenge is available. Let's see it. The flash away. He doesn't have it to follow up, but he has the movement speed. Jumps into the turret. There's the world ender, but it's way too late. The healing to come through. The solo kill. And Zhang Wuji says, I can help, but EDG say we can do the Baron while this is going on. Because Zhang Wuji showed. They know there's no AD carry. They can burst. Dips. They don't want it. They see look, Ruby in the mid lane. Fair, actually. When I look at the comp that they have. Zoe and Misfortune don't really do a huge amount to this Baron, but it will allow Xiao Chang the time to go towards Ultimate boss. immediately. There's the Emperor's Divide. The Death Charge with the Flash. Ruby will get knocked up away from the land. Cataclysm is there as well. Good Death Sentence with the box. They flay him back, but Junjia has the Stone Plate. Heals up, but not in time. And the Bullet Time just sends them outward. Xiao Chang will be pushing this bottom lane inhibitor turret, but Rogue Warriors are still fighting back. They did get the kill onto Junjia. Goes a little bit too far forward without hope or Scout to give him the damage he needs to finish people off. Doesn't matter though, 
EDG crack the base. They are pushing onto all structures in all lanes. And Rogue Warriors can capitalize off the death of the EDG jungle. Super curious to see what we get as a back here. EDG still head and goal, but it's now only 7,000. By the way, Mountain Soul coming up in 40 seconds. So good back timing here from the top lane, Fiora, who gets a Caulfield's Warhammer. So we should be at about 30% CDR right now. Rogue Warriors trying to head towards the Baron and get some vision. And this is potentially where Rogue Warriors can force them into a 5v5. How do you position Zhao Shang when you're trying to position for Baron and this Mountain Dragon? In a 5v5 scenario, Crazy, despite being behind, would do a lot more work, in theory, mm. than this Fiora. But it is a 6-3 and three Fiora, so don't hold me to that bet. And the Scuttle Ward's going to do something, but they're starting Baron. Look how quickly they do this as well for Rogue Warriors. They're not out of the woods. Xiaosheng has TP, but he's looking to start the Mountain Soul. Baron is going it's low. A three. They 3, need to get thousand. in. Junja needs to get in. Goes in for the silver. Doesn't get in. So Rogue Warriors get the Baron. They'll get the trade off onto Gragas, but now they need the fight with the teleport in from Xiaosheng. He has the grand challenge and gets it with ease. Ruby has the ulti available, but it's oh parried again on point. A scout steals that kill away from him. And even though they get the objective, this Fiora is running like Flash Gordon. Parry should be available shortly, but under turret tanks it out for now. Doesn't die. The redemption to heal up, and they continue forward. Scout is a man, and so is Hope. And he flashes right on into it. One shot, one kill. Nice stretch line. Nice double. And EDG don't care about the Baron, because they just won anyway. Caitlyn's one shot, one kill. Misfortune's the double up. The two kills for the AD carry of EDG. And they will stride forward, confidently taking this game too. They've got 10 seconds until Ruby but He has no ult anyway. Stone plate used by Junjia to tank up the turret. And they disintegrate immediately onto the Nexus. But a kill first as EDG strike back in the series. I love this series. Mm -hmm. EDG fighting back against Rogue Warriors. And we got a game number three. Finally. Woo! We saw EDG come alive in the series, even if it was only game number two. And one condition, one set pick in the Fiora. And that's all it took. And this is not something you'd expect. One game from Zhao Chang. Mm. way back in the distance is not what you'd expect to bring him out on no. the LPL stage where he's trying to prove himself against the Korean top laner Crazy who he's been bigging up as one of this major lanes for Rogue Warriors I mean look at that damage I mean 26 minute game 15k damage ain't bad from the solo laner of EDG and you have to give it to Junjia. That was a really good recovery and really good setting of win condition. EDG were so on board with what they had to do that game. Where in game one, we're like, okay, you're all over the place. Do you know what the plan is here? This game, they definitely did. Yeah. Look, get Fiora ahead. Junjia split the map on top side. Did a great job of allowing Zhao Chang to take over this lane. Mm. And now Crazy can't be blind picking this Aatrox anymore. Well, I mean, at the end of the day, you know, the Fiora counter pick or the Fiora pick into the Aatrox has only been seen by people like Khan. No one's been confident enough to pick up this top laner. But Xiaosheng, the, the new competitive player, <laughs> hasn't even <laughs> played anywhere else. He played the Marcia Cup and that's it. Yeah, look, that was enough. That was all he needed. This is what yeah. he wanted. Now he... Just a little bit.